I first found out um, about FH, uh, it was actually through somebody that I worked with. Literally, the first meeting we had, he said to me, I've got some white marks under my eyes here, which I'd been aware of, but to be honest, I'd, I'd ignored it. I got diagnosed because I developed a little mark on my face under my eyes. So I went straight to the doctors and they just said, oh, we'll do a blood test and see what's what. And when I came back, they said, your cholesterol's really high. I was a late 20s young mum. I remember pushing pram and thinking, gosh, am I going to be alive to see him get married? The common phrase you would hear is, it's the last person we expected out of us to have the heart attack. You know, I'm the guy who's doing the cycling, I'm the guy who's doing the walking. It was a shock for me to have a heart attack at 43. FH is otherwise known as familial hypercholesterolemia. Now, familial kind of you understand that, it runs in families, but that's a really key point. You inherit it. And because it runs in your family, you actually get it from the time you're born. The hypercholesterolemia bit is a typical long medical word, but it kind of makes sense. So the hyper just means too much, cholesterol means cholesterol, and emia means in the blood. So familial, it runs in the family, too much cholesterol in your blood. But really importantly, it runs in your blood from the day you're born, and that means that by the time you reach your 20s or 30s, you are at greatly increased risk of heart attack or stroke. There is a family history of heart disease. Nobody's lived past 63. My mum always had high cholesterol. She had angina and heart problems since the early 30s. And then with the dying so early, it really did make me think, I don't want to be leaving my children. Generations gone past have died of heart disease and never been picked up. Absolutely. It was like a taboo within the family, but nobody had ever really looked at the root cause. We've never been for cholesterol testing, but when I go into hospital, my mum says, well, listen, I've been on high cholesterol tablets for numerous years. She never told yeah. me really about it. FH is not that rare. In fact, it's surprisingly common. About one in 500 people in the UK have it. The problem, of course, is that all too many people don't realise, and if they don't realise and they don't get treated, then they are living with a ticking time bomb, a hugely high risk of heart attack and stroke at a young age. Most people won't know that they have FH unless they're tested, but you might have an inkling that you have it if, firstly, people in your family, despite not being obvious candidates for heart attack, maybe being fairly healthy, non-smokers and so on, get heart attacks very young, much younger than other people. And secondly, you may notice that you have physical symptoms. So little bits of cholesterol, white lumps underneath your eyes, or little lumps in the backs of your elbows or the backs of your ankles. The day that we got the results, James had already been to the dentist and had a tooth out. So he was having a bit of a bad day anyway. Um, and then obviously he found out from the blood test results that he had high cholesterol. I was upset. purely because he's already got so many other allergies and I just just felt it was a lot for a little boy to have to deal with. You always want to do best for your children, don't you? So I was a bit disappointed that the gene had been passed on to uh, Bethan. But saying that, you know, now that we know what we're dealing with, uh, I'm every confident that she'll live a full and healthy life. I think I live a fairly normal life. I still do everything I did before. I just need to watch my diet and exercise more. Every parent wants the best for their child, of course they do, and we don't want to put our children through things unnecessarily. Unless you have the tests, you won't know if they have the condition. And if they do have the condition, then in order to cut their risk of heart attack and stroke in later life, in order possibly to save their lives, you need to get them on treatment, probably from early adolescence. We had to completely review our diet as a family and, and what we, we can and, and should eat. I've learned to find the sort of uh, foods and snacks that I can uh, still enjoy but aren't unhealthy for me. When the children got diagnosed and we did a lot more research and we looked into the diet and exercise side of it, that's when we made a decision as a family that we're going to have to try and do things together and try and involve everybody so it's not just the kids with FH that are made to diet or to do exercise, we do it all together. My understanding is the heart and muscle it wants exercising, so the more exercise I can do for my heart, it's got to be good. If you've been diagnosed with FH, we do need to get you onto treatment and you do need to take that treatment regularly and for the rest of your life. 
it's really important to do what everybody else should be doing, which is to take care of your heart. So exercise, keeping your weight to healthy levels, keeping your diet healthy and heart healthy particularly, and of course, not smoking, very important. A lot of people look and think, cholesterol, that's not about me, you know, I'm quite healthy, I exercise a lot, I eat okay, it's not me. And they need to realise that it is you and it's your children as well. So it's just a case of a simple test. Because of being told I had FH, I've never ever wasted a day. I consider it sort of, it did me a favour. <laughs> if you think you might have it, or you know someone who you think might have it, then go and get tested or urge that person to go and get tested and then deal with it and just get on with your life. The Heart of the Family campaign aims to increase awareness of and screening for FH, that's inherited raised cholesterol. I've supported Heart UK, the cholesterol charity, for years and I'm proud to support the Heart of the Family too.